Hi there. At the time I'm recording this, it's about half past three on Friday the 10th of January. Uh, and at this point, it's about 10 or 11 days that the TravelX website and online services have been down. Now, if you're not aware, this is because the whole organisation is being held to ransom by some uh, people who have been able to get a virus onto their computer network which has encrypted all of their computers uh, and it means that nobody can do anything. Now in terms of what the company is saying, uh, they are saying well look you can still work with us, you can come into our shops, uh, our online services are off for a while uh, and we're busy in the process of sort of uh, rebuilding what we have already. Um, and so there's some interesting questions there from a technical point of view, which I'm not going to address. I have no doubt that the IT staff who are working very hard on this problem over there are having the worst period of their entire professional careers right now. Uh, and whether or not they did or they didn't uh, patch a VPN server in November when they were told about it is kind of by the by. I'm sure that there were lots of people over there saying we're not investing enough in security, our processes are not good enough and so on and so forth. Uh, so not a lot of benefit of saying I told you so. What I'm more interested in today though is the culture, the organisation culture. This is coming back to the points that I made in the very first LinkedIn video that I ever did which was about Zoom and the Zoom hacking. I don't believe that the first that this organisation really knew and appreciated that they had a security problem was when the problem was discovered. I think that there will have been plenty of people around saying we've got issues, we need to work better, we need to think more carefully about our staff use of IT, we need to think more carefully about our processes, we need to be a little bit more disciplined about the way that we operate. But those people won't have been heard. Uh, by the fact that this is taking place, it's clear that somebody hasn't been listened to, groups of people haven't been listened to, um, and what we're seeing now is the consequences of that. And this is a really, really big problem because this isn't just some bit of video conferencing software which was the situation with Zoom. This is a critical, albeit privatised or privately held part of our international financial infrastructure. So they are responsible for providing the online currency exchange services that are used by Tesco Bank, Sainsbury's Bank and a whole bunch of high street banks, I think including Lloyds and Barclays. And there are people who have bought currency uh, who've not been able to access it uh, and that currency has been unavailable to them for getting on for two weeks now. Um, there are big parts of the way that people who are used to traveling and just use it, used to getting currency from their financial institutions just haven't been able to for the last two weeks. Now, if this were the Bank of England that somebody was standing in the lobby with a machine gun holding up uh, people in there to hostage, it would be headline news. But for some reason, it seems to be in an also run um, in terms of online and reporting. It's there, and for instance, the BBC have talked about it. I appreciate that there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the world apart from this, but this feels like pretty big news. Uh, pretty big news that such an important part of our financial infrastructure is currently being held hostage by crooks. Uh, and the fact that it's not really been treated as being anything other than just a technology uh, story uh, really surprises and shocks and to an extent worries me. Um, so I'm not sure what point I have beyond this, beyond the fact that we really have to learn from these incidents and start getting better about the way that we manage them, the way we report them and the way that we prevent them from happening in the first place. So I do hope that uh, once whatever has happened gets finally resolved one way or the other, we can really take the time to learn the lessons, not just in the financial industry, uh, but across the board, because wherever we are putting valuable information into data stores, it will be an attractive target for the crooks and the criminals uh, and the other m m malcontents and their do-wells. And that's it for me for today. That's my first one of 2020, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.